Now, almost every single day, there's a new AI-based tool coming out that's being touted as the next big thing that's going to replace designers, coders, web developers, all those kinds of job roles. Today, I want to take a look at a couple of tools that are not going to replace us, but will enhance our overall workflow and potentially make us more productive and more profitable. And let's be honest about it, who doesn't like that idea? Before I do start jumping in, though, I want to open the floor up to you. Are you using AI tools like this right now? I'm not talking about things like, you know, ChatGPT that you ask questions and so on. I'm talking about design and code related tools that you use to either enhance your role or replace maybe other people inside your agency, outsource work, those kinds of things. Let me know in the comment section down below because I would love to know what you're using. And if you're on the other side of the table, are you scared of what is actually coming out? And do you think it's going to replace you specifically or other roles inside your company? Again, let me know in the comment section down below. So the first tool we're checking out is a tool called Magic Path. Now, I come across this very recently, released a video last week on my kind of initial experimentation with it, but I spent a little bit of time working on it a bit more, and I've come up with some really interesting thoughts on how I think you could use this. So this is the home page. You can see we've got animation effects inside here. We've got some nice effects for the sort of frosted glass effect, which is kind of cool. We've got our navigation and everything. The other cool thing about this is you'll notice as we hover over these things, we get interaction with it. So we can visually demonstrate how our buttons are going to look. Sure, we're not going to get all the interactivity. You could create those various different portions of this using a tool like Magic Path. But let's just say this is our starting point. You can see as we scroll, we get animations, animations for this. We can use the drop down list so we can see exactly what this would look like. We can enter text inside here your property type, your price range. You get the idea how you could interact with this. You can see when we look at this, this looks a little bit squashed up, so we'll come back to that in a moment. But as we scroll down, you can see we can interact with the various different elements. We have this slider set up. I haven't prompted any of this. This has been done automatically by Magic Path for me. So we can get the hover effect on here. We can filter inside here. We can get a real feel for what this is going to look like. So this would be an example of your home page. Then this could be an example of one of the internal pages when you look at a property. Again, you can see we've got the slider. We can hover over the various different buttons. We can click and actually get real-time feedback on how this would look. You see we've got sticky effects. There's a couple of things missing, like the image is missing here. We can correct these things. Again, you can see as we scroll through, we've got the tabbed elements, which we can see exactly what these look like. We've got similar properties which you can hover over, and we've got that same consistent footer and so on being used. So we can use a tool like Magic Path to create this. If we jump into Magic Path itself, you can see this is what we've got. And as you can see, I've got a couple of iterations of the same thing, getting kind of feedback on how these work. The cool thing about this, and again, I would recommend checking out my previous video, link here to check that out and the description, is that this is an editable setup. So for example, if we want to change something, we can select it. All we need to do is select the entire parent frame, come up to the edit component option, select it, we get this new panel on the right hand side, and now we can come in and make changes. So for example, let's say we wanted to change the size of those icons and the text on our design. Well, we can click, scroll through to where we want this, enable the edit component option, select our div, and as you can see, we have full control over on the right hand side. We can use flex if we want to. So those options are inside here. You can set your dimensions, your height, your width, and so on. Come into our typography, for example, and we can change our typography inside here. So at the moment, this is using 48 pixels. And because we're using a design system inside Magic Path, we can open this up and we can change. And you see, because all of those are using the design system, so like a CSS framework, they will update simultaneously. Same thing goes then if we select the icon, select the parent for that, for example, and you can see we can come over, and our options are available here. So this is currently set to 64 pixels. Let's make it a little bit smaller. So we've updated those icons. Everything just looks a little bit neater now inside our design. We can save this. And each time we make a save, we'll get a new version. So we can switch back for between the different versions. So if you are working with a client, you can very easily jump back and forth between the various different iterations and get a real feel for how it all looks and the changes you made. So we go back, scroll down, you can see there's our larger icons. 
you see how this works. I think this is pretty useful. There's also more options here. So let's say, for example, you like the look of something, but you want to make some changes to it. You can select the entire kind of component, ask Magic Path, and you can ask it to do certain things. You can choose a different design system, create your own design systems from here as well. So you can see there's our typography, effects, rules, and so on. You can import as well directly into this. So you can import your own design system, and then you can set that up inside here and use that across the entire project. There's a lot to like about how this all works. But let's say you want to make a change to this. You can either do it on an entire sort of component level, as in the overall design for that particular page, or you can come into the edit option, select, for example, this div, and you can edit that with AI. And you can combine that with making actual changes to the design itself using this panel. Now, I see this being something that will actually grow and expand and become more comprehensive. You're kind of getting a stripped down, simplified version of something like Figma, along with some AI tools to design the overall layout for you. And you have all this interactive and sort of cool elements with the animations and things. So you get a really good idea. So for me, I think Magic Path is a very, very good contender for being able to get design starting points, whether you use them as they are, modify them, just get them as an ideation process to get a bunch of different designs, and then move that over, you could do that. You could also look at the more options, you can export this as an image. If you have a paid account, you can also view the code, download the code base, code base, or open this up inside Cursor. I will be paying for the pro account for a month to test this out in a little bit more detail. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comment section down below. But if we jump back to the preview, we can open this up with the code, and we can take a look at what's going on. Now, I'm assuming this would be the same type of code that we would have if we have a pro account, but that might not be the case. So take this with a pinch of salt. But if we open this up, let's select an element, for example, so we'll come over to this section. If we take a look at the code, you can see it's not that bad. It's not perfect. There's ways we can make this actually better. And like I said at the top of this video, I probably wouldn't use this to output the final end result. I would use this as a design tool and an iteration tool. But the code itself isn't too bad. There's a lot of things could be done tidier inside you. But what I do like is because we're using that design system, there's a lot of consistency across what we create. So for example, if we come down to something where we've got the repeating elements, if we select, come over, choose one of those repeating elements, you'll see we've got motion div, we look at the one above motion div, the one above motion div. So we're not creating divs and classes and everything for each individual element inside our design where they are using the same styles from our style sheet, from our global sort of uh, design system. They're consistent across here, like we saw when we changed the size of these. If you're wondering why they haven't changed, it's because I'm not looking at the latest version of this. I'm looking at the original version we saw right at the top of the video. So code-wise, it's okay. It's not too bad. It's not crazy. It doesn't score amazing on PageSpeed Insights. But like I say, this is the preview. and I'm sure that if you actually add the end result, it would potentially be better. But it's a design tool first. You get the idea of what I'm talking about. Next on my list as a design tool that I think is worth investigating more is a tool called Reloom. Now, I've covered Reloom in several videos. I'll link those the playlist down below so you can check those out. So I'm only going to go through this super quickly. And this is the way it works. We have a sitemap, which is what you can see here. We have a wireframe, which is a kind of low fidelity layout, which we can totally customize and change and edit, do all those kinds of good things. You want to change the component, you can absolutely do that. Select it, come up, change the design. Choose a completely different header to see how it works. Then you have your style guide, which you can then apply your colors, your typography, your basic UI styling for your buttons and so on. So if you click this, you can see you've got various different options, different rounded corner radiuses and so on. Your main typography, your body typography, you can shuffle this, you can add different colors in, you can get a light and a dark mode, and you can just shuffle the overall design to get a feel for something that's completely new that you may not see yourself. This is all cool, and you can see you've got the overall layout here. Each of these components is editable, so you can change the colors. You can come in and you can upload images. You see how this all works. I've done that a little bit myself, so we've customized this a little bit. But what you can also do is you can then come into your design, which is a new beta feature, or beta if you're in America. And this allows you then to actually 
customize and add actual content into each one of those templates that we created inside the wireframe section. So you can see there's all the different sections coming to design. You can see they're all created here. I want to make a change. So for example, we've got this section. We open this up. We can say we want to change this between a video. You've got a form, of buttons, and so on. So you can tweak even more inside here. You can change the color scheme from the different color scheme options we have based upon the style guide. And we can also change the image. So if we choose to upload an image, we now have our customized layout. So again, this is one of those things that if you wanted to hand this off to a client to get feedback, you absolutely can do. You can share this. You can output, output this as a Figma file, straight to Webflow, a React file, or just as HTML. So if you wanted to use this again to output a final result, or even just to output this onto actual server setup, so you could then hand this over to a client so they could interact with all the different parts of this to get a real feel for how it all works, and then come back to you with feedback, you could do it that way. Lots of different ways you can do it. You can even get feedback directly inside the Relu editor. So again, another super useful tool to be able to work on the design side of things. Next, we have Bolt. Now, Bolt is more of a coding tool, I would say, than it is a design tool. However, you could still use this to test out design ideas, functionality, and get feedback from a client before you start doing the actual overall design. So this is a project that I'm testing out using Bolt. And this is a business listing website which has a dashboard that allows you to manage the different content that's on this. That's business listings, uh, articles, those kinds of things. There's a section so people can actually upload their own content if they want to, which then goes and has to be approved by an admin. All this is being done inside Bolt. This is currently up online, which I'll link this. So if you want to check this out yourself, and the link to all the demo sort of setups I've got will be here for a short period of time. So if you want to check those out while watching this video, you can see them, see the code base for yourself and get a feel for what it does and how it works. But as you can see, we've got different sections on here. So if I want to look at entertainment, cafes and bars, health and fitness, hotels and accommodation, there's things to do, there's viewing all activities, there's featured businesses. The cool thing about this is the bolts got actually gone away and pulled in the real data from these businesses from a website that I built many years ago for this particular purpose. So the data that's in here and stored in Superbase is actual real life data. So that's pretty cool. I didn't ask it to do that. It just did it itself, which I think is pretty nifty. So for example, you can see there's our featured things to do. We can view all activities and go to a archive page for that. Or you can click and go and take a look at one of these. And again, you can see it gives us all the information. Directions will actually take you through to live uh, sort of directions on Google Maps. You can see it's broken it down to the various different tags, the cost, the details about it, the location. If I connected this up to a Google Maps API, we'd see the location there. I haven't set that up, so that's why we've seen a blank section. You see navigation works on you. So if we come into all businesses, for example, we've got filters down the side. We can come and take a look at one of these businesses. Call now actually uses the phone number. So if I click on that, it will try to call. So if you're on a mobile, it will call it. Directions, visit the website, are all live and connected up to the real data, which you can see is listed here. Again, I haven't asked it to do this. This has all been done for me. So you can get an idea how this works. Add a business, this is your add a business section. So this will be, allows you to sort of go in and add anything you want. Again, it's all connected up to the live data that's being stored in the filters, the organization, and so on. You can then fill this out and fill out the relevant information, submit it for review, and then it'll be reviewed over, go into the dashboard, and it'll be awaiting review before it's actually approved to go on the site. So this has all been done inside Bolt. Again, let's take a look at the code here to see what's going on and see how good or bad the actual code is. So if we come over and just choose the option here, let's come down to one of our cards, for example, because there's a lot of data inside there. Let's select that. Again, let's take a look at what's going on here. So it's been set as an article class, which isn't too bad. We don't have huge amounts of divception, which is always a good thing, although there are quite a few divs inside you. But again, not, not too bad. You can see we're using these uh, BG Gray 800. This kind of uses Tailwind as this sort of structure. So you will find a lot of what you'll create will fundamentally follow that kind of Tailwind design system. So they do start to look very generic, which is why, again, I say I would use this as a starting point, a test process, so see functionality. You can adjust colors and things. But if you can give a working prototype to someone, 
that's a client and get their feedback on it, at least it allows you to iterate quicker. So this leads me on to one of the points that I keep raising when I talk about any kind of AI tools. Today is the worst they're going to be. Tomorrow and the day after and six months time, they're only going to get better. So I think when you have maybe lower level job roles inside a smaller business or an agency, you know, the things like creating these wireframes and so on, I do think that those user roles are probably going to disappear and be taken over by these AI tools. There's still no replacement at this point in time for understanding user interaction, for understanding user workflow, for understanding the journey that potential clients are going to work with, advising your clients on the best way to do things. Those are skills and knowledge that I think AI is currently, and I don't see in the foreseeable future, being able to replace human beings that understand human beings and human nature. But there are certainly plenty of reasons why you may want to use tools like Reloom, like Magic Path and so on to get you through those initial stages, those kind of more time consuming stages, getting feedback from clients. Then once you've got all that information together, forming a good solid plan and then actually building those things out. Tools like Bolt and so on will get better and they will be there to be able to do a lot of things. However, I think if you adopt these kinds of tools and modify the way in which you see AI, those are gonna stand you in good stead to be in business longer than those people that are either terrified of it or they're just basically ignoring it completely. But as I said at the top of this video, I want your feedback. I want your thoughts and opinions, how you use AI, which camp do you fall in, what tools do you use. Drop some comments down below. I will have links to the various different projects. You can check those out for yourself and you can look at the code and everything else that goes with it in the details down below. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts and until next time, take care.